Bizarrely, the Irish army, keen to distinguish themselves from the British, chose a uniform with a Germanic style. News was heavily censored and G2, the Irish intelligence service, was given increased powers to suppress any anti-Irish activity. That included the IRA. In early 1940, Sean Russell sailed for America again to drum up support and raise more funds. He temporarily handed over the reins of the IRA to an altogether different personality, Stephen Hayes. A militant and a risk taker, his behavior was compounded by his fondness for alcohol. Stephen Hayes' first act was to intensify the Bloody S campaign. On the 6th of February 1940, explosions occurred simultaneously in London, Birmingham and Manchester. The plan was a very ambitious plan to cause a huge level of disruption in Britain with bombs in public places, in places like cinemas and in smaller targets like letterboxes, for example, and public lavatories, but also then bombs on railway lines and at power stations to effectively try and, and seriously disrupt life in Britain. Hayes's Night of Terror raised eyebrows in Berlin. The Nazis were becoming concerned about the S-Plan's lack of focus. They wanted the IRA to concentrate on military targets in Northern Ireland, but Hayes and O'Donovan seemed more interested in plain terror. To get control of their trigger-happy friends, on the 9th of February, German intelligence, the Abwehr, sent another agent, Ernst Weber Droll, to meet the IRA. A former circus strongman, Droll, landed in Kalala Bay, County Sligo, on board submarine U-37. In his rubber dinghy, he brought a more powerful radio transmitter, $15,000 in cash, and a message from Germany requesting the IRA to stop bombing civilians. What Abwehr would have preferred was that the um, IRA would have concentrated their activities in Northern Ireland against uh, British military installations to generate uh, broad public support um, in the nationalist communities north and south and therefore create, in effect, um, a rebellion um, in British territory. The message was heeded. The bombing stopped. But not before 300 bombs had been detonated. 96 people had been injured. Seven had died and hundreds of IRA members interned. Reflecting in the 1960s, Seamus O'Donovan said the S-Plan campaign had brought nothing but harm to Ireland. Now the unpredictable Stephen Hayes knew that if he wanted Nazi support for his war, he would have to try a different approach. So he decided to offer the Germans something entirely new. He ordered one of his men, Stephen Held, and the Nazi spy, Oskar Faust, to deliver a plan he'd been working on. Faust and Held took the plan to Berlin, where it received an immediate response. That was why, on the 5th of May 1940, a lone German Heinkel was flying over the Irish Republic. And on board was a man known to the British intelligence as the Flying Spy. Hermann Gortz was a German intelligence officer who had spent three years in prison in Britain before the war on suspicion of spying. Now he had a new mission. Gortz's codename was Kilka. 
Gilke had studied the dossier sent by Stephen Hayes to Germany. It was nothing less than a plan for the Nazis to invade Northern Ireland with active IRA help. It was called Plan Kathleen. Plan Kathleen proposed the conquest of Northern Ireland by a simultaneous IRA insurgency and the landing of German forces. 50,000 Germans were to be dropped in the north, while over 30,000 IRA fighters were to be concentrated on the Irish border near Loch Erwin. Together, they would sweep through Ulster and destroy all British forces. On the 5th of May 1940, the weather over Ireland was poor. According to his post-war statement, Hermann Gortz was supposed to land in Northern Ireland. In fact, he touched down about 80 kilometers to the south. During the descent, he lost his radio transmitter and the shovel he'd been given to bury his parachute and uniform. But to his credit, he marched for five days to an agreed rendezvous point, even asking the police for directions, still wearing his uniform. Seamus O'Donovan met him and spirited him away to a safe house. Herman Gortz, Stephen Hayes, Stephen Held and Seamus O'Donovan met on the 17th of May 1940 to discuss Plan Kathleen, the Nazi invasion of Northern Ireland. On the surface, the plan had appeared to be sound but it soon became apparent that things were not what they seemed. Hayes had exaggerated the IRA's strength. Instead of the promised 30,000 men, there would only be 5,000, and most of them would be unarmed. Worse still, the IRA had completely underestimated the strength of the opposition. Gortz later revealed that Plan Kathleen gave no thought to where or how the coast of Northern Ireland was fortified, how German troops were to be brought to Ireland, nor how control of the sea approaches was to be obtained. Plan Kathleen would have been a disaster. After the meeting, Gortz thought long and hard about whether or not the plan could be saved. Five days later, while he was out gathering intelligence, the Irish police raided the safe house. Gortz's parachute, typewriter, maps, drawings, and a copy of Plan Kathleen itself were seized. The plan was blown, but Gortz slipped away. However, though Plan Kathleen was dead, the invasion of Northern Ireland was still very much alive. On the same day that Gortz had left Germany, Sean Russell had arrived from the USA. He was treated like a true friend and collaborator, staying in the best hotels and sampling the finest food and wine. He was then taken to a secret base. Russell is given access to the Brandenburg camp where German forces are trained in sabotage, special explosives training. And he's also then introduced to various people in the Nazi hierarchy, including von Ribbentrop, the, the foreign minister. Von Ribbentrop assigned Foreign Office Minister Edmund Wesenmayer to oversee all joint IRA operations. Russell was given the details of Hitler's new plan to invade Ireland called Operation Green. Operation Green was to be carried out in conjunction with Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of mainland Britain. It aimed to tie up British troops stationed in Northern Ireland who might have been sent to reinforce the southern English coast. It would also prevent Ireland being used as a refuge for evacuating troops 
and would provide a staging post to the Luftwaffe forces to attack northern England. It is not known what role the IRA would have played in Operation Green, though Sean Russell had that information. On the 7th of August, he took it with him to Wilhelmshaven to board submarine U-65. It left Germany for Ireland the next day, but during the trip Russell fell ill and died, it is thought, from a burst ulcer. He was buried at sea. In Ireland, Stephen Hayes took over as full-time Chief of Staff. Under his erratic leadership, the idea of invading Northern Ireland would live on. And Southern England was already being softened up for invasion. The Battle of Britain was raging. If Hitler wanted to conquer Britain, he needed command of the skies. Throughout the summer of 1940, the struggle for air supremacy was played out above the English Channel in southeast England. But on the 15th of September, the Royal Air Force inflicted such damage on the Luftwaffe that Hitler postponed his invasion plans. Yet, the very next day, Irish intelligence intercepted a message to Churchill from two Irish Republicans. So you think you'll win the war, you poor sap? The IRA were not about to give up, and nor yet was Hitler. With Operation Sea Lion on hold, Hitler asked the Chief of the Navy and the head of the Luftwaffe for one last report on the likelihood of success of an invasion of Ireland. The Navy replied that any such invasion would be completely hopeless, believing there was a high probability that troops might be cut off and trapped. Operation Green was cancelled. And then, without warning, Ireland itself became a German target. On Easter Tuesday in April 1941, 180 Luftwaffe bombers attacked Belfast. Their target was the Harland and Wolf shipyard, a vital base for the Royal Navy. The bombing was inaccurate. Over a thousand died, and half the city's housing was destroyed. Even Ireland's Prime Minister, Eamon de Valera, was outraged and sent 13 fire tenders to the city to help. In the dark hours that followed, the whole of Ireland was united for the first time in decades. Maybe de Valera felt guilty, having discovered that the Luftwaffe used the unblacked out Dublin to Belfast railway to navigate to their target. But then Dubliners too looked up into the night sky and heard the drone of approaching aircraft. Unidentified warplanes dropped bombs on several occasions in different parts of neutral era. The bombs were subsequently proved, of course, to have come from Germany. On the 31st of May, just after midnight, explosions were heard around the city. When morning broke, Dubliners awoke to 400 homeless, 90 injured and 34 dead. Many still believe that it was a German reprisal bombing for coming to Belfast's aid. But it is more likely that a Luftwaffe squadron simply flew off course and dumped their bombs on the coast.